Jesus said this in the New Testament. Matthew wrote this down, this account of Jesus in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28. These are the words of Jesus, and here's how he said it. Come to me. In other words, he says, abide in me. Draw away from all the chaos. Draw away from all of the noise. Draw away from all of the busyness, the heartache, the brokenness, the struggle. Draw away from it. Abide in me. All of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens. And I will give you what? Rest. I'll give you rest. This idea of rest that Jesus uses is a little different. This word is a little different than the one Moses gives us. The word that Jesus uses here is this word intercession. Or, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, intercession. To take an intercession. Um, or, I'm sorry, I'm saying that wrong. Hang on. And not intercession. Intermission. Take an intermission. Intercession is what we do when we pray. Intermission. So write down the word intermission. Inter. I'm telling you, I'm not an artist. I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah. Enter into mission. Okay. I did that on purpose. Stop laughing at me. I did that on purpose. No, but you need to take an intermission. I'll clean that up for the 930 in-person service. But this idea that we need to take an intermission. With this idea of an intermission is to, is to unplug. It's this idea like right now, Jesus is saying this, come to me and I'll give you an intermission. Like all of the noise, all the chaos, all the mess, draw into me and you can take an intermission. Whew. Take a break. I, I love to coach and I'm not sure what this fall is going to look like. I coach 10-year-old boys. And whenever I coach 10-year-old boys, it's, uh, I don't know how to describe it. It is so chaotic. Um, imagine if you threw five cats on a basketball court and just let them go. That's, that's kind of what it's like. I mean, they are running around crazy. They're scratching each other. They're, they're hissing. They're, they're batting at the ball. I mean, they just, it's just chaos. And, chaos. and they, don't, they don't listen. And then on top of that, I've got my assistant coaches that are yelling at them. That, that's coach mom, coach dad, coach grandpa, coach grandma, all yelling at them. There's three courts at one time playing. Imagine this, three courts at one time, noise and craziness. I can tell you as a coach, I try to get them to listen to me in the midst of all that. They can't hear me. So I have to call a timeout or I have to wait till halftime. And I take an intermission. It's an intermission. It's a moment to pull away, to get them together, away from the noise, and for me to speak to them. This is what God wants to do with you and I. I want you to think about this. What right now feels chaotic to you? What right now in your world is the one thing that you go, this is insane in my life. I don't even know how to navigate this. So Core Church, we have these four core values, but we also have our eight core practices. In fact, uh, many of you are going to be gathering in groups tonight and this week, and you're going to be going through these eight core practices that help us to grow as followers of Jesus. If you're not in a group yet, there's still time. We want everybody in a group for the next four weeks where we talk through these eight core practices. But the first two are really about abiding. And I, I want you to write this down. The first one is this, and I'll spell this right this time. I want you to write down daily devotion. Do you have a daily devotion, a time where you stop, where you rest, where you abide? And this is where you learn to trust God in your daily devotion. Listen, so many times if we don't stop and read the word, all we're doing is swimming around in chaos and we're using our own wisdom, our own insight, our own creativity, our own resources. But when you have a daily devotion and you get into the word of God, guess what happens? When you get into the word of God, he begins to put his super on your natural. Suddenly you have supernatural wisdom, supernatural creativity, supernatural things begin to happen in those moments where God begins to speak to you. A daily devotion. The second one is something we're all doing right now, and that's Sunday worship. Man, I want to tell you what the decision you made today, the right decision. You decided and you said today, I'm going to pull away from the noise. I'm going to pull away from the chaos of everything that's going on. And here's what happens when we come together to worship together. Two things happen. Number one, we experience the presence of God. And we experience the power of God. That's what's happening for you right now. The Holy Spirit is speaking to you. And, and right now, he's going to supernaturally impart power to you in this 
moment as we gather together because tomorrow you got to go back out into all of this. But because you took time today and because you're daily in the word of God, when you come and you abide and you rest and you say, I'm going to trust in him, you can go back out into this and you rise above all the chaos and all the confusion and all the crisis and all the heartache and all the brokenness that the world says, how in the world are you doing this? So Lewis and Clark, when they got to that mountain, they didn't give up. They didn't just go, well, I guess that's it. I guess we're just, we're done. No, in that moment, Lewis and Clark, they ditched the canoes and they became mountain climbers. So my question for you today is this, are you willing to ditch the canoes? Are you willing to ditch the boat? Are you willing to ditch everything the world is doing? And are you, are you willing, are you willing to become a mountain climber? Are you willing to abide? Are you, are you willing to, to learn to rest and to trust? Are you willing to withdraw from all of this and go to be with the mountain of God and spend time with God?